Okay, prepare yourself to enter the magical realm of Fantasia Music Evolved for Connect. Here with me is John Drake. Let's do just that because you brought the game and an Xbox One yes. with the new Connect. We and stole it. We ran out of the you building. You ran with as it. fast as you could. Yeah. But uh, this is a huge deal for you guys. First and foremost, tell us how this collaboration came about. So we actually had a meeting about three years ago. We were working on prototypes with Connect cameras and music just because we wanted to see what we could create. Right. Uh, and Disney sort of serendipitously came to us and said, "Hey, we want to make a Fantasia game." And everyone's jaws dropped. And we've been working on it ever since. We had a long time prototyping, but now we're in full production with 100 people making a huge, huge music game. Taking everything you learned from the last generation of Connect, we're going to actually see this thing in action. Yeah. For people who are unfamiliar with the game, tell them a little bit about, you know, they hear Fantasia, they right. know you guys from Dance Central and Rock Band. What are you doing in this game? Right, so you are the new Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yen Sid, the master sorcerer, has brought you in the world like every great musician to learn the ways of music and uh, magical mastery. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're going to prove to Yen Sid that you're ready to be the Sorcerer's Apprentice by exploring the realms of Fantasia. We have a bunch of different worlds in the game that allow us to have the different art styles you expect from a game like Fantasia where things are going to change a lot. Right. Uh, and you'll go in, you'll uncover magical uh, mysteries, and uh, when you've collected all that magic, you'll then take that back to the workshop where it's based, like Mickey was in the workshop. Right. Uh, and along the way, you'll actually also conduct the heavens uh, like Mickey did on a cliff by performing songs. So Annette's already found, using our cursor, some of the interactions, but she's zooming right in to a performance song. We're going to play Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody while we're here. I and like th that. This game's all about music creativity. So whereas our other games are music simulations, this game's about music creation. We're putting you in charge of where the music goes. Okay, so it's very interesting, and, and a little bit for people to wrap their minds around. Now, yeah. now fortunately for you guys, there's, there's not a lot of these motion-based games at launch with the Xbox One, so you, yeah. you, you have some... Uh, a window there to let people get used to the there game. There weren't right? any games on stage this morning at Microsoft. I was really surprised. So we're, you know, we're leading the pack. We're here demoing game. We're running live on native hardware. We're on the new Xbox One camera, the Xbox One Connect. Right. And so Annette is playing uh, the gesture-based beat match that is inside a performance. And what she's doing here is she's actually choosing which mix she's picking. So she picked Pink, which is the original master. Okay. But the cool thing about Fantasia is that as you go through the game, you actually are able to evolve the mix to say, I want to have the green mix, which is like a hard rock mix, or I want to have the blue mix, which is an orchestral mix. And you can blend all these songs together to make a custom unique mix that you create as you're playing. I do that whenever I hear this song without the game. Right? Just so kind of wave it around. <laughs> it's pretty great. It, it's pretty great. And it's also, I mean, very creative. Is that Was that one of the core goals here, to make somebody feel like they're experiencing a piece of the music that they haven't before? Yeah, so the idea here is like, it's music you know and love. It's why we have popular music. We also have classical music. You know, wow. we still have the heritage of Disney from the animation, from Yen Sid, from classical music that was in the film we announced this morning. We have Night on Bald Mountain in the game. Okay. Just that big sort of triumphant uh, devil scene in the original Fantasia, but it's songs you know in a totally different way. So now you hear Annette's pick blue, so you hear a classical orchestration around Bohemian Rhapsody, which you wouldn't have heard before. Let's listen for just a minute yeah. while she plays and, and get the Annette. immersion factor here. Nice, right, so we get another choice moment right here. Taking through the thundering metal bass. Pretty awesome. So along the way, there's also moments where you get to create. So there's musical manipulators coming up, where Annette, if she gets this prism that'll appear on the screen all lit up, she gets the magic inside of it, she'll be able to actually grab the music and transform it. So there's a moment called uh, the effects sculptor that Annette will be able to shape the guitar solo by crafting this spinning lathe with her hand. It's pretty, pretty weird and cool. It is pretty pretty cool. It is pretty weird, too. It's a yeah. pretty trippy game. It's pretty awesome. But I mean, what went into the decision process of what songs were going to be included? Yeah, so we knew we were going to have some classical music in the game, but we also knew we wanted to broaden it to today. I mean, Walt's original vision was to have contemporary music of the time, so classical and jazz, and to really bring people into a medium they wouldn't have had access to otherwise. So, it, And he wanted to evolve it with constantly uh, revised episodes, like new shorts. And so we're basically saying if that had always if that had always happened and never stopped, yeah. what would it be today? It would be music that's classic rock. It would be contemporary hits. It would still have classical in it. So we're trying to really show the complexity of his vision. So this is one of those musical manipulators. This is a prism, and that's trying to get every edge of that prism to be lit up. And she just she it was almost about to do it. She's done it. So now it's starting to glow crazy. She's gonna grab that musical energy inside, and with a musical manipulator, she'll be able to actually shape this music in real time. So you can hear her control the guitar solo. So the there you go. And she twists her hand. She has to delay an echo. You guys had a lot of fun coming up with this. I mean, seriously, it seems like the type of game you just had to think way outside the box. It's a pretty, it's a pretty awesome dream. It's a big challenge, right? The design team has to come up with a gameplay that works for you know Queen, uh, Avicii, and you know Night on Bald Mountain yeah. all together. But 
the same time we're musicians and artists and being able to play with this stuff in a kind of fundamental way is really exciting. Yeah, so, you know, Dance Central had a pretty distinct audience. Who's the audience for this game? I mean, because there is such a wide range yeah. of, of things that would be interesting to different people, but who are you really targeting? I think we're looking to uh, anyone who loves creative games that are really about expressing yourself or, or even just about like a different visual look and feel. People are kind of bored of another brown next-gen shooter, right? So like people who love Journey, people who love Flower, people who love these games that are a little bit more about a world that's created around you. And then beyond that, people who love any kind of music, right? And the thing about this is even if you don't love Queen and you love classical music, this song has a classical mix or it has a metal mix, right? Like and that's about to bring in a crazy double kick drum pedal. So if you're yeah. like, Queen's not hard enough for me. I'm more of a Queen's right guy than a Queen guy. Yeah. We got you covered. If you're more of a Johann Sebastian Bach guy than a Sebastian Bach guy, yeah. we got you covered there too. But you know, the game does seem pretty physically intensive. I mean, it's on, the, on the sweat scale, I think it's between like a rock band and a dance central. You'll work up a sweat if you really get into it, but you can also choose to have smaller motions. It, it's it's about how much you how much you throw your gestures into it is how much it'll actually show up in the game. Which is All right. cool. John, let's ask you a couple questions from the community here, rocking right. out on drums, love it. We have a drum kit somewhere around here. Let's I play. This should totally ready do to go. That. All right, how many tracks will be released with the game, and is DLC a part of the plan for adding more tracks? Per usual. Yeah, so there's over 25 songs on the disc. All those songs have three three remixes, so there's kind of an infinite enough level of ways to play each of those songs. Okay. And DLC is, we're definitely planning on having DLC in some context, but we're not going to shortchange the game in favor of DLC. Just it's a harmonics game, so more songs. If you want to customize the track list, we're going to work on that for afterwards, but not not finalized yet. Yeah. Too and early. As you mentioned, there are some modern bands in the game. Uh -huh. Have they reacted to being included in this? What, what's their perspective? Because you yeah. know, I want the medium is introducing people to new things all the time. Uh, so it's a great avenue for them as well to have their music be heard, correct? Yeah, I think our music partners are really psyched. Some of them, I mean, they love Fantasia. This is the thing that everyone kind of grew up with, and it's fundamental to a lot of their understandings of how music and visuals interact. I think that what they're really excited about is giving fans access to being a part of that music, being able to shape it and feel like they're part of the creative process. That's a hugely empowering thing to bring people closer to the music. Yeah, and this is exclusive on the Xbox One. You guys have talked about the, the, the power of the upgraded Connect. Talk a little bit yeah. about... Um, what the Kinect brings to the table to make this experience possible. So it's going to be on the Xbox One, but also on Kinect for Xbox 360. That's what so I mean. So we're on both platforms, totally fine. Uh, <laughs> but the new Kinect is great. I mean, higher fidelity tracking, uh, you know, you can play closer to your TV than you could before. Yeah. Uh, you know, great microphones for any voice command stuff we're working down the road. Okay. And, but just in general, I mean, we've been working really hard to refine the, you know, the sort of quality top of line engine we have for Dance Central in terms of motion detection. We're basically the best motion developer in the game right now. And since we're the only one really showing a game on the floor of E3, I guess. We scared everyone else off. Yeah, and you know, when people first heard the announcement of the game, you hear Fantasia that has a very distinct association with it. Sure. But you guys are bringing something new to the table. What's the reaction been like from people who have actually checked it out or just around the industry? I think the reaction of people who've seen the game, who are seeing what we're seeing right now, who've played it, understand what we're trying to do with it, understand we're trying to extend that vision and sort of springboard into a new uh, generation of interactivity. I think people who just saw, say, the trailer, maybe thought we weren't going to really treat Disney with the reverence it deserved or, or maybe not bring the classical music in. But uh, you know, we're the guys who did the Beatles rock band. Like we take these big iconic things, we want to shape it in a way that celebrates what they are while also extending it into new age. So uh, you know, have some faith. We're we're doing our best here. We love Fantasia. We love Disney, uh, yeah. and we're back now in the Shoal, sort of our first of our many levels. And that has brought the world to life by uh, unlocking some more magic. She's brought our giant turtle friend in, and uh, she may now grab it. She has this cursor called the Muse, which she uses. It's actually a 3D cursor, so you can reach out and touch things in the world. Uh, and she can walk side to side to traverse the world. But if she wants to go, yeah, you can see other parts of the level. But if no one wants to snap and you want to do the jazz clamps, she's going to pull up, uh, we'll see if we can pull up these jazz clamps here on the back. That turtle's actually covered in sort of uh, musical mollusks. And musical this is, mollusks. This is actually a slightly more complicated instrument. Now this instrument is actually teaching you different pieces of a drum set uh, represented by clams that open and close. And then as you learn it, so you learn these are the snare drum clams, these are the ride cymbal clams. So if you're a musician, you kind of can get that stuff real quick. If you're not, you know you're playing with sea life. Uh, aquatic aquatic audio and having a good time. And once you've played all of it, so Annette's gonna play the kick drum here, it opens the whole drum kit up and you can solo, and that can go crazy and make a big uh, cacophony here. Mm -hmm. Or she can be incredibly detailed and make a small pattern. And she'll record that, and that loop will play that in the world, so she'll be able to express. So the world's both a trophy kit for what you've done, but also right. a document of how you've expressed yourself inside these songs. Well, I mean, it looks extremely imaginative, extremely creative, and a way to tie together a lot of interesting things. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it pans out. Is it going to come out at launch of the Xbox One? Just after launch. We're going to be out in 2014, 2014. Uh, hopefully as soon as we can. We're really excited about it. All right, man. All right.